as Biden's poll numbers continue to slump, well, buckle up for what will be, as I was just saying, one of the most negative campaigns in American history without anything positive for Joe Biden to run on. If you can name something, please text us, email us at The Hannity Show. We'd love to hear from you. The Biden campaign, as I said, democracy in peril. Well, by the way, at simultaneously trying to kick Republicans off ballots. A little ironic, isn't it? They'll obsess about Donald Trump, Donald Trump. They'll never want to talk about Joe's records. Everything about January 6th, except the facts, you know, like the police chief, Capitol Police chief's son, uh, the remarks peacefully, patriotically, uh, march to the Capitol so your voices will be heard. Those facts, that narrative, anything that doesn't fit their narrative, they, in fact, won't tell you about. They will demagogue abortion and, as I said, employ the left wing classic identity politics, that playbook like never before. Right on cue, anti-Trump, Fulton County DA, Fannie Willis, now blaming the serious misconduct allegations against her on racism. Anyway, here to respond to all of this, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. By the way, another person that actually you beat Donald Trump in 2016. Uh, in Iowa, at the Iowa caucuses, and uh, and you ran a very tough campaign against them. Um, your thoughts about last night? Well, Sean, it's great to be with you. Listen, last night was decisive. It, it was it was a dominating victory for Donald Trump. I, I got to say, there's no place like the Iowa caucuses. I know it intimately. The men and women of Iowa, they take their responsibility incredibly seriously. They scrutinize the candidates. It's an amazing process, and I'm a big believer in letting democracy play out. Well, last night it played out, and I, I got to say, Trump's victory was across the board. He won 51 percent of the vote. He won 98 of the counties. Congratulations to President Trump on that dominating victory. And, and at this point, I, I believe this race is over. So, so I am proud to endorse Donald Trump for president of the United States. I look forward to supporting him enthusiastically because I think it's time for the Republican Party to unite, for us to come together. We've got to beat Joe Biden. We've got to beat this disastrous cultural Marxist agenda in the White House. We've got to retake the United States Senate. We've got to hold the House. We got to come together and win. And with the results last night, the people have spoken. It's time to move onward to victory in November. So do you basically think when you look at the map, it's going to be New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, Super Tuesday. You know the map as well as anybody. When you look at that map, what do you see? Look, I, I don't see any path to victory for anyone other than Donald Trump. New Hampshire may be closely contested. We'll see what happens. I think after New Hampshire, it will go to South Carolina. I believe in South Carolina, you're going to see Trump win a dominating victory in South Carolina. And, and after that, you've got Super Tuesday. I don't see a path for any candidate after that. And, and, and I'm a big believer we need to let the process play out. It did. And the results last night, 51 percent. 98 counties, that, 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 that's compelling. And, and at this point, I think the contrast needs to be on substance and policy and records. You mentioned a minute ago the classic test of any presidential race. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? And I got to say, for just about every person in America, the answer is hell no. Un unless you happen to be a big tech billionaire or a Mexican drug lord, the, uh, those guys, <laughs> they ought to vote for Joe Biden because they have done fantastic over the last four years. But, but, if but, you're se but Senator, I've got to take else. issue with you. You're, you're yeah. obviously not listening to the media mob and you, you're not listening to Joe and, and the vice president Harris and you're not listening to circle back Jen Psaki and Corrine Jean-Pierre <laughs> and Alejandro Mayorkas because they have been telling us the border's closed and the border's secure. Those 10 million people that we know now have entered this country illegally, many from countries that don't yeah. like us, our top geopolitical foes, many with deep ties to terrorists uh, are showing up at that border. But, you know, obviously it's closed and it's secure because that's what they keep saying. <laughs> are, are they lying to us? I, they are absolutely lying. And I got to say, I really enjoyed that montage you started your show with of, of Jake Tapper and Rachel Maddow and all these leftists crying. It reminded me of, I, I will confess, anytime I'm a little bit little bit down, I like to play Rachel Maddow on Election Day in 2016 and the absolute shock and pain and agony. Schadenfreude is not a pretty instinct, but, but they are, look, they hated Trump in 2016. They hate him even more now. They are broken. They are liars. 
there's a reason. I agree with what, what Mike Huckabee said. There's a reason they cut off Trump's speech, because if they actually believed it was as horrible as they said, they would want to play it. But they don't. Jake Tapper just wants to say anti-immigrant. Listen, I'm the son of an immigrant from Cuba, but there's a right way to come that is legally. And I'll tell you, my home state of Texas, there is no state in the country that is bearing the brunt of this invasion more than the state of Texas. And Joe Biden and the Democrats, they don't give a damn. They don't care about the dead bodies that are piling up. They don't care about the children who are brutalized, the women who are sexually assaulted. The more than 100,000 people have died of drug overdoses. And I think the American people are fed up with this chaos at the border. And they recognize that much of the corporate Senator, media is just this. lying to them. Yeah. Well said. Um, I noticed Chuck Schumer has targeted you, number one. Yes. Um, you will likely be facing, uh, at the time, Beto Bozo, as I called him, O'Rourke, was considered a real candidate and got a ton of money, over $100 million, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know why, but every time you run for re-election, you are maybe the second most hated man behind Donald Trump in politics. They really are, they're gunning for you big time, uh, politically speaking. Well, listen, I wear that as a badge of honor, but you're right. If, if you are a left-wing Democrat, after Donald Trump, there's nobody in the country you want to beat more than me. And Chuck Schumer's made clear, I am his number one target in the country. The Democrats are going to spend $100 million this year trying to beat me and trying to flip Texas blue. Now, that ain't going to happen. I got to say, last time I went on your show, the incredible viewers of Hannity, I encourage folks, go to tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. Thousands of people went to tedcruz.org. They made contributions online. It is powerful because we're going to defend Texas. We're going to defend the country and we are going to win the White House and, and send Joe Biden to Green Acres retirement home. The one thing I can say is you are a solid conservative. You have been your whole life. I wish more Republican senators thought like you and fought like you. Uh, anyway, we appreciate you breaking news about endorsing President Trump tonight. Uh, we always like breaking news. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.